Good uh, morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Volatility Report. It is I, Andrew Giovanazzi, Chief Operating Officer of OptionPit.com, filling in for Mark Sebastian, who is at the CBOE Risk Conference this week. If you're in Florida at the conference, go check him out. If you're an Option Pit client, he'll even buy you a drink. All right. If you're not an Option Pit client, you got to buy him a drink. I thought that would get at least one laugh, but I guess it just wasn't as good as I thought. Anyway, uh, blog VVIX back to pre August levels. Okay. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. All right. VVIX back to pre August levels. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And also, welcome to new people in here. Uh, you know, that's a great question, Bob. I'll find out soon. I try not to think about warmer climbs in the middle of winter because all it does is, it, you know, you just have to come back to the cold anyway unless you, you take the whole winter off. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't even looked where he is. He's in Florida somewhere. They usually went to Boca, as I recall. But anyway, uh, what's going on? VVIX, sorry, I'm off track. I am off track today, um, but not super off track, meaning what the heck is going on? Right? Let me get this up here. VVIX, I think we got a chart of it. Right. That's that's the story. There you go. There's the story that Mark wrote in the blog. That's the story with what's going on. It is either the best buying opportunity in vol history, or this means we are rallying back to 2000 by tomorrow afternoon. Literally. I don't see how we go one way or the other. Either the non-farm payroll confirms that the Fed's going to raise, everybody accepts the fact, and on we go. Or the vol, this vol is the best deal in history. Now, in the option pit in the chat room, we, we come up with a trade with this. I think that's worked okay on this so far to try to take advantage of this. Um, but volatility at least volatility in VIX is pretty cheap okay uh, conversely as I just saw let's get a little bit of the futures right uh, last print this is a little uh, easier in the option line I believe there we go okay we just rolled off that March 2 yesterday settles this morning we have 19, so we have almost a full two dollars to March with two weeks to go. So either these futures start to come crashing in by tomorrow. I think there's probably about a uh, 75 cents in extra premium in the VIX future right now, which would leave VIX cash options uh, very vulnerable uh, to a drop after the non-farm payroll number. Because then we'd be down to less than a week with two dollars of premium. So the last, they are basically the futures now are holding the uh, the potential move. Okay, and that's the reality. The futures are holding the potential move. Uh, VIX cash itself is not expecting a lot of all. So what's happened is. As VIX has gone down, instead of the premium being held literally in the VIX options near term, the premium has shifted to the VIX futures, VIX futures over cash, leaving the kind of cushion for volatility that liquidity providers in the futures really want. So if vol goes up, they're not expecting it to go up a bunch, and they're expecting the future to totally absorb any move up in cash flow. Right, which is hugely different than how we traded almost all of 2016, which is the opposite, meaning we've been 
Our futures have been mostly backward dated. Cash VIX implied volatility was very high. And what we've moved now to is what used to be common. Okay. We moved to a, and let me see, just this is like a 30 day implied volatility for VIX, which is going to be similar to VIX. Okay. We've moved kind of back to the old regime where, and let's get rid of this blue line because obviously we've had a lot of realized volatility. Right, that'll give you some perspective. Right, we're moving back to kind of how we used to trade, meaning VIX vol is low, but future premium is high. Right, while we were in this zone, right, VIX vol was high, future premium was low or backward. Okay, this is generally a lot more reminiscent of a bull market or a market that's expecting to to you know it's what we're saying is we're taking the downside out taking a lot of that upside in VIX out. We're going to transfer it to the future, and we're kind of looking for more smooth sailing ahead. So it would not surprise me, even though we've had these crazy run-ups, volatility, the flip-flop and vol pattern, is mostly looking at more benign activity as opposed to what we've had. Whether it's right or not, I don't know, but at least that's what the signal is now. Okay, so... You know, that to me, uh, if you got a lot of short upside, just be, be careful of it, right? You don't want it blowing up in your face. I mean, I know we've had a huge rally, but they've rearranged volatility in such a way that it's more set to coast or the market to kind of move higher and a lot less for those catastrophic down moves or those big moves away from the money that we've had recently, right? That's how I see it. That's how we'll look for trades, and that's what we've basically been trying to uh, organize in the strategy letter. So, uh, you know, if you buy a VIX call, you might not be paying a lot of all for it. What you are paying for it, though, is, you know, it's $2 over parity at this point. So VIX has to really blow up for that protection to really do you any good. All right, so there are other places to go find it. Um, that being said, uh, uh, the other area that I think is starting to become interesting is all the uh, oil gas exploration companies that uh, essentially have gone to zero. Uh, it seems like there's a bid for them. There's a bit of a short squeeze on them in general, uh, which is potentially hugely interesting. Okay, very interesting. So if if that at least is telling me that maybe they put in some kind of a bottom, in oil when all of those shorted companies there seems to be a lot more covering in the last couple of days than there have been all year at least in 2016 those are the two things to watch um, you know dumpy little names like chk or whiting petroleum or something like that things that are under heavy borrow they could be squeezed higher uh, as far as uh, technology tech stocks have basically led they're selling off a little bit um, Again, it's not surprising me that we sell off a little after the two days of rally. It's just the market's really not looking for the kind of movement that we've had. And that's where it sits here on Thursday, March 3rd. I will see a lot of you in the chat, and we'll see what we got going on. Bye-bye.